the room full of people back in Washington watching those the events unfolding in Pakistan and at that stage obviously they did not know that it was going to be the resounding success it turned out to be how tense uh, would 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 how, how high would tensions have been at that stage uh, extremely tense I remember sitting in the Pentagon with one of my friends about midnight waiting for General Norman Schwarzkopf to execute his left hook to kick the Iraqi army out of Kuwait back in 1991 um, very tense. And I mean, you look at it now and it did go almost like a textbook operation, but obviously there is a lot of scope for things to go wrong, not, not least in the fact that um, they took the difficult option, didn't they? I mean, they could have just sent bombers in, but they sent in a helicopter unit instead. Very good, cho very good choice, though, I think. Very good decision. Um, if the president made it, fine. Uh, the results here are that you have absolute as close as you can get to absolute 99 percent assurity that you got Osama bin Laden you don't have to sort through the rubble of 35 thousand 35 two thousand pound bombs and you don't have all the collateral damage and you, you don't have all the conjecture associated with that um, and, and we're told that it was a capture or kill operation although it has emerged this evening that um, that Osama bin Laden was not armed, although we're told he did resist um, when the forces went in. Do you think that there, there was a real intention to capture him, if that, if that had have been a possibility? I think there probably was, because you, you get a distinct intelligence advantage if you capture him and not just his disk and software and so forth. However, these kinds of operations are based on uh, split-second timing and when you have to make a decision kill or not kill you usually go for kill if you think your yourself and your comrades are, are threatened you say that there would have obviously been access to to incredible levels of intelligence if they had got Osama bin Laden but the, but the flip side is the fact that he would have been um, a, a sort of siren I suppose for for supporters and it's not clear that he would have actually yielded much information is, isn't it easier for the United States that he is dead I think it is. Uh, for that very reason, we saw the difficulty with Khaled Sheikh Mohammed when we tried to say we were going to try him in Article III courts in New York or wherever. Uh, extreme blowback on that or pushback on that. It would have been even more difficult to try uh, Osama bin Laden. Um, so if you're asking me to comment on which would be the more facile solution for the United States, obviously his death under the circumstances it was orchestrated under. Uh, probably was the best solution. And what are your thoughts on the incredible secrecy that surrounded this operation? I mean, I suppose it's inevitable when you are doing something that is as sensitive as this, you want to keep the circle involved as tight as possible. But the fact that uh, they went in and the pa Pakistani authorities did not know that those U.S. troops were involved in this operation, and they were there for 40 minutes. It's essential, absolutely essential. If, you're, if, you're, if you want any chance of success at all, you have to limit to need to know and that means the operators and the decision makers that's that's all that needs to know about this and going around the Pakistanis was essential because frankly like us at times they leak like sieves and, and just a very quick thought on whether you think an, an image should be released now of, of Osama bin Laden because obviously it is something that is being weighed up I don't think so I, I think we've accomplished our purpose uh, uh, magnanimity and humility is the is the refuge of a superpower in this uh, event and we need to move on very professionally conducted let's conduct the aftermath very professionally too Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson thank you very much for joining us thanks for having me and for more reaction here let's speak now to the Conservative MP Patrick Mercer who's uh, also uh, former chair of the counter-terrorism subcommittee he's uh, in our Westminster studio now evening to you thanks for being with us evening, how worried are you that uh, as a result of all of this, there could be reprisals, revenge attacks by al-Qaeda or any of the franchises of al-Qaeda. Well, if, you, if you're a, a sad old anorak like I am and you spend your time studying these things and looking at Islamist websites, then you'll see that, that um, the revenge for an attack like this, using their words, that murders the sheikh, in other words, the you know, bin Laden, um, is already being planned, has already been talked about. Now, bearing in mind that, of course, Terrorist organizations generally don't just use bombs and bullets, but they use words to terrorize because that's their job. I don't know how much credence we give this. Um, it's probably just as scaring to be told that some ghastly revenge is on its way as to actually mount that revenge. The fact remains 
that the organization has anticipated this for some time. They've, they've, they've clearly planned it to a, they've clearly planned their revenge to a degree. And I, I guess if they are sensible that they'll do nothing in the short term and wait, forgive the analogy, but for the dust to settle uh, before they do something. Mm. A, a debate raging in the White House about whether or not to release pictures of uh, uh, the body of bin Laden. Would you worry that that might inflame uh, opinion around the world? Uh, I, I don't actually think it matters. Um, th there is little doubt on only extremists or extraordinarily narrow-minded individuals would, would, would think that he is not dead. Um, he's gone, he's out of the way, he was never any more than a titular head, he was never an executive. All I'd say is that death is death. He's gone now, let's, let's treat him with as much respect as we, as we can, despite the fact that he was a monster. I, I, I personally don't want to see his body. If the Americans tell us that this has happened, I have no doubt that there are DNA tests which have been taken. I, I don't want to see a photograph mm. of the dead body. People are already upset enough. We don't need anything more to, 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 to stick a further stick into the nest of hornets. And, and the White House saying tonight that actually he wasn't armed, although they're saying he did resist arrest, but he was killed. Do you, do you suspect, I mean, the initial report coming out of the White House was that actually this was a kill operation where there was never any intention to capture him alive. Do you, do you suspect that probably was what the American troops were under orders to do? No, I, I really don't. Um, that is not a military option. As you heard Colonel Wilkerson saying in, in, in the previous report, no soldier thinks in those terms. A dead man can't talk. And above and beyond everything else, you want intelligence. For instance, um, uh, uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, an individual who was taken several years ago, apparently, I'm only going on what I've heard, but it was intelligence received from debriefing Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, which eventually led to, to, to the, the apprehension and death of Osama bin Laden. Now, bin Laden um, would, would be very, very knowledgeable, would have all sorts of intelligence to give. Any professional soldier will tell you that's what they want. I accept the fact that his subsequent trial and, I suspect, execution would have posed another problem, but I suspect that would have been worth, I'm afraid, having to face that process in order to get the intelligence from him. What about the terror threat here in the UK? Do you, do you think that has been raised as a result of bin Laden's death? And if so, what should we be doing about it, apart from, obviously, everybody being vigilant, as we're constantly being told to do? Well, I, I think the world is probably a better place um, as a result of bin Laden's death. But I don't think it's a safer place, certainly not in the short to medium term. There is no particular solution to this other than to say to people, please, understand it's dangerous. Understand people want revenge and are planning to have revenge. But as I've said already, um, a sensible organisation would wait a little while until we are less alert and, and until we are less ready to receive this sort of revenge attack. On the other hand, I, that nothing that we, we can never do enough without terrifying people. We can never do enough to alert people to what the dangers are. OK, Patrick Mercer, thanks for your thanks time so this much, evening. Thank thanks you. for being with us. An inquest jury has decided that the newspaper seller caught up in the G20 